The U.S. flag Merchant Marine, our country's commercial fleet, supports our armed services in times of war. In peacetime, they sail around the globe bringing goods to and from the U.S. In wartime, however, these commercial vessels and the civilian mariners who crew them take on the dangerous role of sailing across contested waters to transport weaponry, fuel, and supplies to combat zones. My grandfather served in the U.S. Mer Merchant Marine in the Atlantic on a Liberty ship, and that was a big threat. I mean, the, the, the German fleet being able to take out our sea lift capability, it was significant. Some were my wife's family of people who were, um, you know, part of that effort was, uh, you know, up in the Barents Sea with U-boats swirling around. And I mean, they, you know, were really sitting ducks, but they did their mission. And, and again, uh, D-Day wouldn't have happened. You know, the um, Russia's counteroffensive against Hitler never would have happened if it really wasn't for that maritime fleet. Over 9,500 of them perished at sea, the largest percentage of any of the service branches of those that gave their life and sacrifice for this nation. Recognizing a crucial need for a steady supply of trained merchant mariners, in 1943, Congress established a new Federal Service Academy in Kings Point, New York, the United States Merchant Marine Academy. As FDR said at the opening ceremony, this academy would serve the Merchant Marine as West Point serves the Army and Annapolis the Navy. Well, I think the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy deserves some credit for the, the success we had in World War II. We had, we had cadets, uh, not called midshipmen at the time, but cadets serving on Liberty ships. We had many of them die serving their country before they graduated. We know the importance of sea lift. We know that the United States Merchant Marine Academy provides that cadre of those merchant mariners that are going to be needed in any situation going forward. During Operation Desert Storm, I was on an aircraft carrier. At the time, we had about 400 ocean-going merchant ships. And a lot of those weapons, weapon systems, munitions, fuel, came on those merchant ships. And we've gone from a fleet of 2,900 ships in 1960 to today down to 182 ships. It is staggering and sobering as to where we are today, and we know the importance of logistics. That's a problem. I mean, if we wind up in a conflict, and we want to do whatever we can to stay out of a conflict, especially with a near-peer adversary like China, but if we were, if we did find ourselves in a conflict on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, we have to be able to get the equipment and the people there that we need. Today, we're in a much different environment, particularly in the Indo-Pacific, and the tyranny of distance in terms of just the length uh, of a supply chain uh, to getting uh, people and equipment in there is so much longer uh, and so much more precarious. A major strategic problem that we face today is that the uh, the countries that we are at greatest odds with um, in Eurasia, that is to say Russia and Iran and China, uh, are all seeking to project power outwards. And that involves naval conflict. And naval conflict involve, requires resupply. Naval resupply constantly re requires repairs, the material to conduct repairs with, all of that has to be borne by sea. Uh, as they have constructed their merchant marine and financed it and supported it, it's all focused on their ultimate effort, um, uh, which, uh, which appears to be, from all uh, outward appearances, uh, at the very least, the unification, reunification of Taiwan within People's Republic of China, but expansion of their influence around the world, uh, both economically and militarily. A maintaining an adequate number of U.S. flagged merchant vessels and well-trained mariners is essential to national security. And as our fleet has shrunk, so too has our pool of mariners. I testified on many occasions as the administrator that we were about 1,800 mariners short for a full-scale mobilization lasting more than about six months. So uh, if there were a conflict 
today. We could not just turn on a spigot and start producing more qualified merchant mariners. But Sealift is the backbone of our strategy of any power that has to use expeditionary forces um, in order to reach the places of conflict. And we're simply not ready. We need that capability at sea. The ships are an important part of that, but the most important part of this renewed effort to make sure we have presence at sea is indeed our merchant mariners. The premier institution that provides that capacity, that capability, that experience to what we need across the spectrum for the United States military and for our, our sea lift ca capacity is the United States Merchant Marine Academy. They're part of our you know, effort in fighting a war. And the service obligated uh, U.S. merchant officers, about 80% of them come from the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. The Merchant Marine Academy should be looked at strategically as just as importantly as the other service academies. Right? We cannot fight wars today without an assured supply, a logistic supply. So, um, you know, the, the work at the Maritime Academy is, um, in my opinion, of the highest national importance. They have just such a wealth of knowledge and background and understanding of ship and ship's functions. And I think that plays out across any bridge or any deck plate where a King's Pointer shows up on their ship. Uh, that they they have they bring with them, uh, you know that tradition of excellence, but also the realistic characteristics of a of an officer, uh, well trained, technically proficient, knows how to lead from day one, uh, and gets a, gets on about doing it. It's part of our national treasure, and we need to ensure that it never goes away. It always needs to be there. It's just such a critical part. I strongly believe that the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy and its graduates are unique and essential assets to our security. Keeping them ready and able to serve when called upon is a vital part of our national defense. The United States Transportation Command, TRANSCOM, is the Department of Defense Command responsible for providing air, land, and sea transportation across the globe to meet national security needs. TRANSCOM Commander General Jacqueline Van Ovos, therefore, has the ultimate vantage point. I'm grateful for the opportunity to offer my thoughts on the U.S. Submerged Marine Academy. As the combatant commander responsible for joint deployment and distribution, I clearly recognize the importance of the academy and the graduates it produces. In a conflict, we expect 90% of military cargo will be transported via sea lift. There is no doubt about it. Sea lift is vital to delivering a decisive force. Because of this, you can quickly piece together how crucial merchant mariners and strategic sea lift officers are, and how important this academy is to our national defense. The United States Merchant Marine Academy. Our nation needs it now more than ever. This video was produced by the United States Merchant Marine Academy Alumni Association and Foundation, and it is dedicated to the memory of the 142 USMMA cadets who gave their lives in service of our nation during World War II. The Alumni Association and Foundation would like to thank the commander of U.S. Transcom, 
General Van Ovost, along with the elected officials and experts who graciously agreed to appear in this video. This project would not have been possible without their wealth of knowledge and experience, shared concern about our nation's sea lift capacity, and appreciation for the crucial role that USMMA plays in our defense strategy.